The shocking truth about cholesterol today, and I think a few of you are gonna get freed from your medications. Coming right up. Hey, I'm Dr. Living Good, and we are talking cholesterol. Let's talk the truth about it, the stuff people aren't wanting to dive into, and I wanna give you five really powerful ways that you can actually measure and look at your cholesterol completely differently than any doctor has looked at it before to know do you actually have a problem. Let's start from the beginning. This is a sticky subject. I wanna unclog it for you. Wow, those are really bad puns, but this is gonna be fun. All right, so what we're looking for is the good cholesterol versus bad cholesterol. It's this huge debate, and everyone is demonizing LDL, and they're praising HDL, and honestly, LDL feels really bad because he tries to be a good guy, but everyone doesn't like him, and everyone's liking HDL, and give him all the attention. So let's clear this up, give LDL a little bit credit. The truth is, is that your body makes cholesterol. It is not going to make a substance that's trying to kill you. Your liver doesn't make toxic cholesterol. It makes what your body needs for a purpose, right? Now you can get some through what you eat, which you gotta take care of that, otherwise you might have a problem and then you might need the cholesterol drugs. But if you can start cleaning that up, you gotta understand what your body's trying to do. So it's like two sets of dump trucks, right? On the way to the construction site is LDL bebopping along, carrying everything in the back that is needed to load up uh, and, and to build up the building, okay? You can imagine that. So you eat too much sugar, you have oxidative stress, and it damages the inside of your blood vessel. Well, the body's gonna send cholesterol, a waxy substance, says the American Heart Association, that your body needs to repair tissue, to make hormones, to make vitamin D, it's essential. But let's say that you damage the inside of your blood vessels, now your body has to send the dump truck LDL to try to repair it. Well, that's a heavy load, and it's gonna lay down that layering of wax on that area of the blood vessel. Well, now HDL comes in, and it's at the dump site waiting to pick up the wreckage and clean up the garbage, and then haul it away. So that's why it's praised as the good cholesterol because it's getting rid of the damage. Well, LDL is doing its job by repairing and building what it needs to build. HDL is just cleaning up the leftovers and the mess. So you need both of them. And if you have enough cleanup dump trucks, HDL, it doesn't matter how much LDL you have. You see? So you just have to have the right types. So let me help you make sense of that. But first, let's go to what traditionally is done, drugs. History lesson. This this is crazy, you're not gonna believe this. Cholesterol back in like the 80s, normal was 230, right? A very high range would have been 300, and then we started to tighten it. And then, I think it was in the 90s at some point, it was a drop to 200, and then we now have tightened it up in the 2000s, in 2011, um, tightened it down to 180 is what your total cholesterol numbers need to be, and now I see some patients under 150. If you're under 150, you're like asking for dementia because your brain brain is made up of 60% fat, AKA cholesterol. So this is crazy that we're linking these together and cholesterol lowering medications are actually tied to dementia, but why do these numbers keep going down? Hmm. When the changes were made from 1980s to 2011, 30 million more Americans could now be diagnosed as having high cholesterol. That just ain't right, people. I think there's some people that are a little greedy getting behind that and forcing these numbers to go down because if your number is 250, but it's made up of a bunch of good cholesterol, then what are we concerned about? It's all good cholesterol, HDL. But where the problems come in is if your LDL gets too high. But if your LDL and your triglycerides are in a good range, you're gonna be all right. I'm gonna talk more about those specific numbers when I give you the five of them in a second. But you gotta think, when a company can grab 30 more million customers and now make a diagnosis, they're gonna be pushing the board that oversees those guidelines to be making those change and it has been proven fact that most of the board members have a tie back to a cholesterol drug company. Let's talk about the farce of advertising that a lot of these drug companies are doing. And let's start with Lipitor's ad. Bing, let's put that right there. And the uh, Lipitor ad, if you watch this and look at it, this was ran in major magazines and newspapers. I'm gonna show you right now what drug companies are doing and how they're twisting their numbers to make you believe that this is the next best amazing thing, when actually it's no better than a sugar pill. 
stuff gets me fired up. I'm talking about heart attacks. All right, so with this cholesterol drug, what it says is that taking Lipitor can lower your risk of a heart attack by up to 36%. That's crazy, who doesn't want that? I'll just start taking it now. I'm gonna give that to my kids. I wanna give that to my dog, but I don't even have a dog. So if I did, right, I would want it to have Lipitor so it doesn't have a heart attack because this lowers it by 36%. But follow the asterisks, people. The asterisks on this page, which this little line uh, writing at the bottom of the page says this. In a study of people that took a placebo, 3% had a heart attack. In the same study, the people that took Lipitor, 2% had a heart attack. Do you see where I'm going with this? If your main brain has got some math skills, it's going there already. What it's saying is that actually what happened is it went from 3% down to 2%. The actual number is it lowered it by 1%. That's random chance. That's what it's called in scientific studies. But what they took out of that is like, whoa, the actual numbers when you just dial them in, like it was like 3.22 or something like that, and like in like 2.0. You know, the, the actual percentage between them, the difference between them was one third. It was a one third difference, right? The difference between two out of three and three out of three, right? It's a one third difference. Or what the actual, actual numbers was 36%. So they took that number and saying, see, it lowers it from a 3% chance to a 2% chance. They told you that that wasn't 1%. They told you that was a 36% reduction. Did you just follow that? Because that blows my mind and makes me not want to trust that company ever again when it comes to my number one health asset, which is me. So if these drugs are harmful and they're causing side effects and they're stripping your muscles of valuable things like CoQ10 and they're causing your heart to have long-term problems and have ties to memory issues and dementia, this is all on the FDA website, by the way, then what the heck is the good remedy? What can we do? How do you make sense to know what can you do to lower your cholesterol if you actually have a problem? But first I got to go to what do you actually need to look at to know, do you really have a problem? Let's go there. So there's five powerful numbers that you need to know that could save your life when it comes to your heart and when it comes to cholesterol. Number one is your HDL to total cholesterol ratio. Whether your total cholesterol is 150, 200, 300, it, not, it doesn't really matter. We wanna know what is the cholesterol made up of? Because if it's made up of a bunch of HDL, you're good. So if 24% of your entire cholesterol is made up of HDL, what studies and science is showing is you're in a good range. Now, if it goes below that, you don't have enough HDL to clean up all the damage that LDL is causing. So what your cholesterol is made up is way more important than how much you actually have total. So the HDL to total cholesterol number needs to be 24% or above. Number two is your triglyceride to HDL ratio. So take the number of triglycerides you have, let's call that 100 in your blood, which would be a little bit high, and let's say your HDL is 50, you are now in a two to one ratio, which means you're good. The triglycerides are the amount of fat floating around in your blood. So if you got HDL, which again is the clean up dump truck, the clean up dump truck is going around and gathering it and cleaning it up in a proper fashion. So even though your triglyceride is raised, if you got enough HDL cleaning it up, you're okay. So when that triglyceride to HDL ratio starts to widen, meaning that you have 100 triglycerides in your blood work and you only have 25 HDL, that's a four to one ratio. That's not good. Not enough clean stuff to clean up the junk, the fat floating around in the blood. So number one, you got to lower your triglycerides. How do you do it? Honestly, sugar is the biggest culprit. Hits your liver, turns uh, sugar into triglycerides. That's a problem. So lower that down, get your liver functioning properly. If you need help with that, grab my book. It'll show you how to do it. Now, uh, triglycerides got to go down. HDLs has got to go up. How do you raise those up? You gotta get good proper omegas and good healthy fats in your body to lift them up. The book will also show you how to do that. So that's the solution, but you really wanna pay attention to the triglyceride to HDL levels. Number three is the LDL particle size. You could have 200 LDL, but if they're all decently sized, the quality of them matters way more than the quantity. Meaning, if you have a bunch of LDL in your system and they're all teeny tiny little particles, those are dangerous. Why? Those are the little ones that are able to slide right through the blood vessels. But if you have bigger HDL, LDL particles, they just bounce off the sides. 
They cannot get into the system the way they're designed or the way that would harm you. So if you have an LDL measurement that is high, before you just jump on a cholesterol lowering drug for the rest of your life, that's going to affect and potentially cause neuropathy, potentially cause um, problems with your Achilles tendons, potentially cause depression issues or mind issues. Why don't you take a look at what the LDL particles are made up of? And if there's a lot of small ones, you got action you need to take and start changing your diet and your nutrition. If they're larger ones, there's not as much risk involved with that. Number four is your fasting insulin levels. It's a deeper measure to level. Are you a sugar burner and a sugar addict? Listen, if you want to get the pounds off of the waist, which is radically going to improve your cholesterol levels and your blood pressure levels, then you have to change your system from being a sugar burner over to a fat burner. Well, your fasting insulin levels will give you a good insight to see, are you sensitive to insulin? Why does that matter? Well, when those things hit the liver, a lot of those sugars and insulin driven conditions, metabolic conditions, are what drive up the cholesterol in the first place. So this is actually getting to the cause of why you may be driving your cholesterol as just a side effect because you're causing a lot of damage because too much sugar and insulin is in your system. So change yourself from a sugar burner to a fat burner. My book can break that down for you. But fasting insulin is a powerful number to know for not only cholesterol but a lot of other diseases as well. And number five, speaking of sugar, is your fasting blood sugar levels, your fasting glucose. Now ideally we want to see this in normal range below 100. I would challenge you to get it below 79. Why? The less sugar that's in your system, the less inflamed you are, the less problems with your liver, the less cholesterol that's floating around in there and triglycerides that are going to cause that kind of damage. Plus, sugar starts to damage the insides of the blood vessels anyway, which is why cholesterol goes up. So if you don't want your cholesterol to get oxidized, which is the primary problem in cholesterol, you got to keep the sugars down. You can grab my book to understand how do you actually lower these levels, but measuring that simple number of blood glucose and keeping it low is the challenge to controlling your cholesterol and hopefully being drug free. So listen, drugs are not the only solution, and in fact, a lot of them seem like a very poor solution that come from faulty advertising, faulty research, and very questionable people making decisions when it comes to your health. So why not just take responsibility for your own and take control and get real health solutions? If I had a choice and I was faced with cholesterol issues, I would at least try these uh, remedies and measure these numbers first and understand as much as I could about my own body before just jumping in. If you're already on a cholesterol med, I'm definitely not telling you to jump off of it, but it's not cholesterol that's the problem. It's the oxidation of cholesterol. So if you're having issues with that, then I would highly advise to get a uh, antioxidant lifestyle, anti-inflammatory lifestyle. A great place to start is from my book, and it'll show you a lot of ways to decrease the sugars, decrease the things that are raising the cholesterol in the first place, but there are better ways to experience real health. Check out the videos next to me. They're exactly what you need as next steps to experience real health. If it's your first time here, hit the subscribe button. Be a part of the Dr. Living Good community as we all get healthy together. I also give free guides, free links and resources, links to our web classes, a lot of resources to help guide you along this journey to help you experience real health. See you again soon.